Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this little presentation, we're going to be considering the subject of split half reliability. As you may recall, this is a form of internal consistency. Uh, and in fact, the oldest way of estimating the internal consistency of a test. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into sharing a few slides with you that will kind of walk us through the process. And we will then have a quick look at a data set that can be used to illustrate the principles. So here we go. Again, this goes way back historically. Uh, 1910, in, in 1910, Charles Spearman and a rival named Brown each published a paper. I think they appeared in the same issue of the same journal, uh, presenting essentially the same ideas. And so we, because Spearman's the more famous dude, we call it the Spearman-Brown formula rather than Brown-Spearman you know, go figure. Uh, again, the, the real advantage of this one is its ease of use. Uh, you know, if you don't have access to a statistics program that will calculate one of the more advanced forms of internal consistency, you can do this one pretty easily by hand or at worst with a handheld calculator. So you know, nice and easy. Uh, and here's the procedure. Uh, so first off, uh, we have to remember what we're going to be doing is dividing the test in half. Pretty easy to remember, right? Split half. Uh, generally speaking, we use the odd numbered items versus the even number items uh, rather than doing, say, the first half of the test to the second half of the test. Think about it for just a moment. Uh, the first to the second half. Well, some people kind of get fatigued as they go along and they might do, you know, more randomly in the latter part. Uh, other people kind of warm up as they go along. We, we don't know which of those is going to happen, but there's a good chance that the first half and the second half will not yield identical sorts of information. Whereas if you do one, three, five, seven versus two, four, six, eight, you know, you're controlling for where in the test the different items appear. That's just a convention. There's no absolute law behind it, uh, but it works pretty well. So uh, we're going to have some people take the test. You know, I've, we've written a test that tries to measure some underlying construct, something we're interested in or something we need to measure. Uh, so you have some folks come in, you know, probably at least 30 or 40, preferably more uh, folks. They all just take the one test. And here's an advantage, right? One group of people takes one test one time. You're in and you're done. Because from here on, you're just playing with the data. So we don't have to bring people back. We don't have to have them take multiple different tests. What we do though, is we treat the test as if it was two tests uh, by again, dividing it in half. We then score each half separately. So you have a score for the odd numbered items all added together and a score for the even numbered items all added together. Uh, then you calculate the correlation coefficient between those two scores. So you, know, you have two scores per person, you can correlate them. Uh, and what this yields is the reliability of half of the test, which doesn't sound terribly useful offhand, uh, but it's a starting point. Uh, we can't just use that correlation as the reliability estimate because half the test is shorter than the whole test obviously. And in fact, if you remember the basic principle here, uh, as you take more measurements, reliability improves, it increases. So the whole test is going to be more reliable than half the test. So we're going to have to make a little adjustment here. Uh, side note before we move on, uh, in my assessment classes, I will not be making you calculate that correlation coefficient. That will be a value that you're given. Uh, I will show you a way of doing so on using a spreadsheet, but again, you're not going to have to do it for my purposes. So uh, here's the adjustment. Uh, it's known as the Spearman-Brown prophecy formula. And uh, this is a special case of the formula actually. And in this case, it's estimating the reliability of a test twice as long as the original. You know, the whole is twice as long as either half, right? Uh, so we want to get the reliability coefficient that's the, you know, the R sub one one, or in some texts, R sub XX. Uh, and that's equivalent to two times the odd even correlation. That's R O E is the correlation between the odd numbered 
scores and the even numbered scores uh, divided by one plus the odd even correlation. And that's it. So just to walk through an example, and then I'm gonna give you a little pause to try to see if you can do one without my telling you anything further. Uh, here's how you calculate it. Uh, we have a test. We've scored the two halves and correlated them. We obtain a correlation of 0.72, our OE equals 0.72. So the formula says we want to double that for the numerator, add one to it for the denominator. Uh, incidentally, uh, using the little asterisk uh, is a way of saying multiply. If I used the letter X, it gets confusing because then people think it's the, the variable X, right? And that just gets really weird. Uh, so two times 0.72 is 1.44. One plus 0.72 is 1.72. Uh, and now, of course, you might want to pull out your little calculator. But if you divide, uh, you'll find that the result is approximately 0.837. Uh, if you want, feel free to round that to 0.84. You know, two or three places to the right of the decimal is always fine. So the correlation of 0.72 implies a reliability of about 0.84. Notice it'll always be a higher number. Uh, so here's example number two, and I will pause uh, for a moment and see if you can just immediately get halfway to the solution before we move on to the next slide. The odd even correlation is 0.5. So the two halves of the test correlate at 0.5. What is the reliability? You should be hearing the little music in the background, but I don't have that kind of technology to set up here. Do, 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 that kind of thing, right? Again, I'm not going to just sit here for an hour and, you know, still everybody has completely solved the problem. Chances are some of you have and some of you are at least halfway there, right? Uh, you're going to have to double that for the numerator. Here, let's just move ahead to get 1, 2 point, times 0.5, add 1 to it for the denominator, 1.5, and then divide, which will give you a value of about 0.67. Technically, it's 0.6666666, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but 0.67, again, is close enough for our purposes. So that's it. Now, we are going, before we leave this, we're going to also look at uh, a spreadsheet and you know, get some sense of how to do some of this stuff. Uh, but let me speak to the pros and cons of the split half method before that. Uh, the main advantage, again, is that it's easy. Uh, the main disadvantage is that this is only one way of splitting the test in half. You could divide it in a different way, you know, first half, second half, items one and two, five and six, nine and 10 versus three and four, seven and eight, 11 and 12, you know, multiple ways of doing it. And in fact, there can be quite a few different ways of doing this. And the problem is they aren't always, they aren't all gonna give you precisely the same reliability estimate. Most of them will be pretty close, but occasionally you get an outlier. You know, it's, it's the old, you know, normal distribution again, most of the values will be clustered around the mid range, but not all. You could get a fluky result that either gravely underestimates or grossly overestimates the reliability of your test. Now, you know, in principle, I could split it up every possible way, right? Calculate all the correlations, you know, run the Spearman-Brown prophecy formula on every one and just average them. Uh, but that's, that would be torture. I mean, even a 10 item quiz can be split in half 20 different ways. Imagine if you have a 50 item test, it's, it's, it's would be a nightmare. So of course, what the clever psychometricians set out to do was to develop a formula that could give you that result, you know, the, the true internal consistency in one go. And this has been done. Um, the two best known examples of this are uh, the Cooter Richardson Formula 20, KR20, introduced way back in the 1930s, but still a quarter century or more after Spearman and Brown's papers, and even more famously, Cronbach's coefficient alpha. Uh, so we're going to look separately at the calculation of coefficient alpha, which is the most general solution to the problem uh, posed here. So that's that. Now, 
we can go somewhere else, namely here. Let me just make sure I'm going to stop sharing and share again to make sure we're in the spreadsheet. Here we go. Okay, so this is a data set that we've been working with and will continue to work with on and off. Uh, it happens to be, for those who are visiting for the first time, uh, it happens to be uh, results of uh, standardization of a measure of fund of information, general knowledge about the world, uh, developed in a multiple choice format for uh, children ages six through 16. Uh, the items are arranged in ascending order of difficulty. Uh, so that's an intentional feature, not a bug. Uh, and I'll just orient you a little bit to the spreadsheet in case, again, you're, you're here for the first time. Uh, the columns headed IO1, IO2, et cetera, represent items. So it's item number one, item number two, over here, item number 10, and so forth. Uh, there are a total of 32 items on the test. Again, we're looking to analyze the value of the items as they contribute to the test, or rather how well the items cohere to form a single scale. Uh, we're not at this time studying you know, the results of the individual children, that they are simply useful in our study of the test itself. Uh, so if you look down a column, you know, here we have item 19, uh, what you see is a series of ones which represent correct answer, you know, you get it right, you get one point, and zeros which reflect an incorrect response. You don't get it right, you don't get the point. So it's a simple dichotomous scoring system, one versus zero, right versus wrong. Um, way over on the right here, uh, we do have the total score. Uh, you may notice that I've arranged these from the top to the bottom, you know, highest scoring to lowest scoring. So the very best or you know, best and brightest, if you will, or at least most knowledgeable of these children got all 32 right or 31 out of 32. Uh, if you will way down, it's a pretty good size data set. There are 730 children here, uh, you know, you reach cases where they've only got, you know, in one case, three, five, six, seven items correct. So there's quite a bit of variability. Now to get the odd and even scores, well, I'm going to have to punch in a little function here. So let's see, item one is in column F. Okay, so uh, we'll just say, Move, Steve. We'll say odd and even. And under odd, we're going to say equals F2 plus, what would come out? G H2 plus J2 plus L2 plus N2 plus P2 plus R2 plus T2 plus V2 plus. Uh, if you see what I'm doing here, I'm alternating, right? So now W, X, 2, Y, Z2 plus, I believe now we're going to be up to AB2 plus AD2 plus. Notice what's happening too here is that uh, it lights up the little boxes where there, where you have entries. Okay, so that's the score. You know, this person who had all 32 right obviously had all 16 of the first, the odd numbered ones right. Uh, for evens, we don't have to do the whole thing again. We can simply take the total score and subtract the odd numbered score, you know, just a little quicker. Uh, now, I don't want to have to type that for all of these. So what I'm going to do is to cover and paint down, paint, paint, paint the big data set. We're getting there. This would have been very tedious to have to type in 730 times, but in fact, I'm going to hit fill down and there we go. The formula has been replicated appropriately all the way down. Okay. So as you'll see, the two, two values tend to be pretty similar. 
Now, if I want the correlation across those two values, uh, I can get that. I'm gonna just create a little space over here and we'll head it odd even correlation. And I'm gonna say, let's have that equal the correlation. This is a, a formula, an equation built into uh, Excel if you have the full version. Uh, and we're correlating column A, N from two through 731. That's the first array. Uh, notice how the for syntax for the equation appears down here. Uh, you can also find it under the formula heading. I'll go up to that in a sec. Uh, the second array begins with A02 and extends through A0731. And there's our correlation, 0 0.8656. Uh, I might want to round that to just three places. So let's do that. Number one, there we go. All right. So the correlation between the odd numbered and even numbered items on this professionally developed test is quite high. It's almost 0.87, actually, uh, 0 0.866, 0 0.87. I don't really care which you use, to tell you the truth. Uh, now, again, I can simply go back to our hand, hand calculations with that value and get it that way. Or if I really want, I could create a formula right in the spreadsheet. Again, I'm not asking my students to do this, but just you know, so you would know, uh, we'd say then the split half the liability would be equal to, got to be careful about constructing this, to times the value that's in AP735 divided by, and again, I have to use the parentheses very carefully here, one plus the value in AP735, and boom. Again, I might want to round that off just a little bit. So we'll do that. Format the cell, number format. We'll just go three places to the right of the decimal. So the split half for liability is almost 0.93. Um, so you see, you can use a spreadsheet to do this. Uh, again, I'm not requiring you to do it, but it's a, it's a useful little thing to be aware of. Uh, at that point, uh, let's see, we could go back. I'm going to stop the share. Again, I'm going to try calling up a whiteboard. If it's here, only it's not here. So I'm going to actually say we're done for the moment and hope that I can edit that last little bit out. Where we go next is Cronbach's Alpha. That'll be the next presentation.